Hello, hello everyone and welcome back to STW Sports and today I'm joined by Charlton Athletic and Northern Ireland striker Connor Washington. Well, first of all, welcome Connor and just going to ask you a few questions about your footballing career. Uh, please tell us about your goals going forward this season though with Charlton Athletic. Uh, I think the ultimate goal, obviously, is is to get promoted and get back in the championship, both from a team perspective and also from from a personal perspective as well, and play as many games as possible. Been sort of relatively stop start, obviously, with COVID and stuff the last last two seasons and, and an injury or two. So, um, just making sure I stay fit, uh, strong, healthy, and and obviously contribute as many goals, assists, and good performances as I can, really. Yeah, and uh, beginning your career at uh, St. Ives Town, what was that experience like for you starting out there and obviously developing for a few years and scoring plenty of goals there as well? Yeah, it was great fun, to be honest. It really was. Um, I learned a lot, obviously, being the age I was, and it was great to play men's football so early because I feel like my skill set just, just suits playing men's football rather than academy stuff. So I sort of owned my owned my skills and obviously a really good introduction to, to the men's game. Enjoyed it. Played with some great, some great players that would, would go on to to do well in in local leagues and, and stuff like that, and won some trophies as well, which was obviously good fun. Of course, then you moved on to uh, Newport County and actually eventually earned promotion to the football league with them. Again, what was your time like in Newport down in Wales? Yeah, it was brilliant. I really enjoyed it. It was obviously the first time I'd moved away properly away from home, so it was a it was a it was a tough transition, to be honest, to go from part-time to full-time football and living on your own, out of your family's back pocket sort of thing. So I think it's probably something that footballers don't get enough credit for, to be honest, because it's a, a big lifestyle change, obviously, and you're, you're trying to juggle that with with putting in performances and, and getting on the pitch, really. So but it was great. I learned a lot, again, to be honest. Um, really enjoyable promotion. Had a great time and... and obviously developed as a footballer as well. Uh, move then to uh, Peterborough United. Um, you know, you have to have a good time in Peterborough as well. That's where you scored your first career hat-trick. Uh, do you remember that day against Scunthorpe United? Yeah, yeah. Don't forget those very easily. Uh, it was a good one. Scored really early, I think, first couple of minutes. Um, great ball by Michael Smith and, and managed to nod it in. And then second half, we played really well, actually. Probably could have had a couple more, to be honest. But... Um, yeah, that's one. That's one hour treasure for sure. Yeah, and overall, your time at Peterborough, though, how would just successful would you say that was? Yeah, it was great. Yeah, uh, I think probably slightly disappointed we didn't manage to get in the playoffs sort of every year, um, and obviously they've, they've been promoted now, so it would have been nice to be able to do that. But at the same time, I developed again as a footballer. Uh, I was learning all the time and played with some really good players, at, uh, a really good football club as well, who are. Uh, are all about developing younger players and and getting them up the football ladder as high as they can if if that's not with Peter Roberts. Yeah, um, as for your time at QPR anyway, you actually uh, started your career there really by scoring against Fulham, I believe. That was your first goal for the club in the West London derby. Um, you know, again, time at QPR as well, a couple of seasons there. I mean, how did you find it at Loftus Road? Yeah, it was tough. I think it was a club that was probably still is in transition, to be honest, from the sort of yo-yo years they went through where they were coming up and down in the Prem and desperately trying to, as so many clubs have, desperately trying to sort of stay in the Premier League by signing players that, that, that they think will do that. And those players don't necessarily want to be there when the club does get relegated. So it was a tough time, to be honest. Um, it didn't go as I'd have liked it to, I don't think, and probably the club would have liked it to. But I think it was probably the biggest learning curve of my career, uh, those couple of seasons and um, to, to taking a lot of lessons into the into the rest of my career, and obviously, I wish the club all the best. But uh, from from both parties, it just just didn't quite click. Yeah, and as for your time at Sheffield United, you were actually there the season they got promoted to the uh, Premier League under Chris Wilder. Um, time in Sheffield was that uh, was that an improvement? Would you say on your time at QPR? Yeah, yeah, it was a great year. I really enjoyed it. I didn't play a great amount of football, to be honest. Probably about six six games worth or something. So. But my position was occupied by the top goal scorer in the league, captain of the football club, and um, there's not there's not too much you can do about that other than go into training every day and, and learn all you can from from players like him. So it was good. It was great to be a part of that and to see the standards that are needed and just the general day to day 
things that are needed that, that go into a promotion winning team. Um, I mean, as for Chris Wilder, what was he like to work under in that season? Obviously, Wilder took over the club, did a fantastic job for you. What what was he like to work under Wilder? Yeah, I think I think he's what you see is what you get. To be honest, he's no different behind closed doors. He tells you exactly how it is, and I think all the lads appreciate that. Um, so yeah, I mean, tactically, he's obviously very astute and he put a very, very good group of, of players together in terms of ability, uh, mentality and personality as well, which I think from the limited time I spent with him was, was probably his biggest asset, to be honest, is being able to to put a group like that together and get them firing all in, in all cylinders sort of thing. So, Yeah, and as for your time in Scotland as well, you joined Hearts for a season. Um, what was it like there anyway, again, having to adapt obviously to a new country and a new league? What was that like for you, would you say? Yeah, it was, it was a tough one because I'd not really played at Sheffield. And then, like you say, you got there to a, a totally different style of football uh, in a different country and uh, trying to settle my family and things like that as well. So it was it was an interesting year. I think it was a really tough year for the club and we had, we had some really bad injuries and I was unfortunately one of those. I um, was out for about four, four and a half. It was probably five months realistically before I got even remotely close to being fit because it was my first my first injury which obviously touch wood is a pretty good going at sort of 28 I think I was so it was a tough season uh, obviously COVID COVID curtails it but we were bottom of the league anyway so I'm not too sure if there would have been much movement in that and from a personal perspective it was just disappointing I think I had scored two scored two in two uh, as I came back from injury just just about felt like I was getting up to speed with it. And then obviously we, we lose the St Mirren game and, and COVID shuts us down. So uh, that was that was sort of the end of that. Yeah, and as for obviously Northern Ireland, obviously had the honour of playing for them in Euro 2016. Um, obviously appeared in every game there as well. Four games started, two came off the bench in two. What was that like to represent obviously your country in their first major international tournament in 30 years? Yeah, it was surreal. It was a great experience, as you can probably imagine, to be honest. Um, to get through the groups was was obviously huge and I think we gave a real, real good account of ourselves and I think from start to finish it was just, just a great experience to be honest and one I look back on with sort of pride and obviously happiness as well. Um, oh, your first goal for Northern Ireland came in a friendly just before Euro 2016 against Slovakia. Do you have fond memories of that one? Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously it was very close to the squad being selected for the Euro. So I knew I had to go into that camp and sort of make an impact. And luckily I managed to do that, not just scoring, but obviously the um the way the way I scored the goal sort of showed what I was about and what I could potentially bring to the party. So it was a really important goal and probably could could possibly be my favourite goal that I've scored to be honest. Yeah, I always want to ask people this about Euro 2016 because that's the time when Will Griggs on fire was the biggest thing in football, arguably. What was that like being in the Northern Ireland camp and hearing that song rung around at every single game? You know, how good was that, you know, for the team spirit as well, maybe of Northern Ireland that the fans were so united for the team? Oh, it was great. Yeah, the fans are absolutely brilliant. They have been the whole time that I've been, I've joined up with the squad. They've been, they've been fantastic and they're a real driving force behind so many good results and obviously, the way things have gone over the past few years. Yeah, um, so you've scored 143 goals in your career uh, to mark out at the moment. Uh, have you got a personal favourite goal, would you say? I'll probably go back to that Slovenia one, to be honest, just just because of what it meant at the time and having joined up so late in the in the party sort of thing, I think maybe without that goal, I I'd, I'd probably don't go to the Euros and probably my career takes a whole different turn. So, I, yeah, probably that one, to be honest. And uh, what about most influential manager you would just say you've played under in your career? Probably on a personal level, probably Graham Wesley at, at Peterborough. Just the, just the relationship I had with him was was as close as I, as I've been with a manager. So in terms of that, and then it's, it's hard to it's hard to sort of de- define what I would class as the best manager sort of thing, most influential, but obviously working under Michael O'Neill was fantastic. Um, He's going to go on to do great things at Stoke, I'd imagine, and Chris Wilder as well. So, 
Yeah, and obviously, um, as for, you know, your time with Northern Ireland as well, going back to that briefly, um, obviously, you know, we talk about playing in the tournament, but just generally representing the country on a personal level, obviously, like you say, about your career, do you feel like that kind of, you know, made, like, made, made your career in a way, like that sort of, them sort of moments was like your favourite you've had? Yeah, definitely. I think I've probably played my best football for Northern Ireland as well. I would, I would say, to be honest, most consistently and... Um, Probably the system and the way that we've played over the years has, has suited me more so than maybe club football. So, Yeah, and of course, currently playing under Nigel Adkins at Charlton. Um, obviously, you mentioned next season about promotion, but what's Nigel Adkins like to be around as well? Very experienced manager in the English game. So what's he like to be playing under? Yeah, he's great. He's very similar to Chris Wilder in the respect that you, you get exactly what what you see, to be honest. Um really really positive as as he comes across in the media that's that's him and like you say he's seriously experienced so trying to learn as much as we can from him and implement everything he wants us to do because he's been there done it and he's got the t-shirt more than once yeah well that's all we've got time for anyway Connor. but thank you very much for joining me and good luck with Charlton Athletic in the coming season what's up man thank you mate thank you